Through the process of learning how to make the following five second simple animation, you will learn the essential basics of animating in After Effects. Let's review the user interface first. This big area is our composition space, where we will view our composition and many of the changes we make can be done here. Over here to the left is the projects panel. This is where we import and organize our assets. Assets being like images, graphics, audio, video footage, and things like that. Down here is our layers panel, and it's a little bit like layers in Photoshop. Over here is our timeline, which is, as you might imagine, incredibly important. FYI, I am using the default workspace. Let's begin our simple project by importing a couple of graphics, again, also referred to as assets. There are a few ways to do that. One is to go to File, Import. Another way is to drag and drop from your desktop. I will select these two images and then organize them in a folder called Assets. Organizing is optional, but highly recommended. I'll drag both of these into that folder. Now we are ready to begin our composition. We can do that with this little icon down here. Let's use a frame rate of 24 and a duration of five seconds. If I type in five seconds, I need to add the zeros or else I'll end up with some small fraction of a second. Click OK. You will see comp one pop up over here. Our composition area remains empty until we drag in an asset. You can drag assets directly onto the composition or down to the layers panel like this. Now that I've dragged my city image into my layers panel, you can see it in the composition area. Check out the preview panel. This is where I can play and stop my composition. It is playing five seconds of this one still image because I've not added any animation yet. I'll go ahead and stop. A great shortcut to play and stop is to use your spacebar. Next, I will drag down my spaceship graphic. I can't see it because it's underneath the city graphic. I'll drag it up in front. Take note of this time indicator. It's vital to video and animation software. When you slide this back and forth, we call that scrubbing. I will place that at the beginning at zero seconds. Let's make the spaceship much smaller. Be sure it's selected. You will see these little gray boxes at the edges that I call handles. I'll click and drag this handle inward. I need to hold down my shift key to maintain proportion. Click somewhere on the spaceship and move it around. I want to move it off screen so that it will come in like this when animated. All we've done so far is set the beginning point. No animation has happened yet. Let's open up our spaceship layer and then the transform sub layer. This is where so much of the magic happens. These are your different ways of animating your animation building blocks, so to speak. Let's begin with a position animation. We activate by clicking on that little stopwatch icon. You can see that it turned blue and it inserted our first keyframe. That is my starting point. Nothing is animated until we create a point B. To do that, I will slide my time indicator over to, let's go with the one minute mark. Now, over to the composition area to move my spaceship down. As soon as I move it, a second keyframe is automatically inserted and that means we have animation. Notice this motion path. Let's go ahead and add another keyframe. We do that by moving the time indicator and then moving the spaceship and repeat. There is no need to click on the stopwatch again. That's a one-time activation. A common newbie issue is to forget how important that indicator is to this process. Keyframes will be added wherever you have positioned the time indicator when you alter something in your composition. Remember that the undo feature, Command Z or Control Z, is your best friend. I want to talk about this curve. You might be seeing a straight line and I want to explain why. Right click over one of your keyframes and go to keyframe interpolation. You will see that my spatial interpolation is set at auto bezier. Bezier is a curve. Yours might be set at linear and linear gives you straight lines. I'm going to keep mine at bezier. 
you can change the interpolation in this way for each individual keyframe, or you can change this in settings to default as Bezier, aka Curve. Do that by going to After Effects if you have a Mac, then go to Settings and General. What you want to do is make sure that Default Spatial Interpolation to Linear is not checked. Do that if you want the curves as default. I'll cancel out of that. Let me zoom in a bit and show you how these curves work. This dot is indicating that there are handles here where I can adjust the curvature of the path. It's such a great feature and time saver. I'll scrub my time indicator to preview what we have created so far. Let's add more keyframes. I'll move it again and you can see it's curving. We can adjust the curves where we choose. For my last keyframe, I'll move my spaceship all the way to the right and off the screen. Let's play our animation and see what we have so far. Now to add an animation device called Ease. After Effects calls it Easy Ease. Note that your keyframes are selected when they are blue. If I click on the position layer over here, it selects all of the keyframes. I happen to want that in this case so that I can add ease to all of them at once. I just need to right click over one of them and go to keyframe assistant and then choose easy ease. You will see that the diamond shape turned into this kind of hourglass shape. Easy ease affects the speed between keyframes. It slows down the speed in the beginning, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down again at the end. Move the time indicator back to zero and then turn on the scale animation. Remember, you only have to turn these on once per animation type. I'll bring it out to about here and make it a little smaller. It might turn itself over if you go too small. Take note that my cursor is down here moving over the numbers. I can also do that up here like we did earlier. Remember to hold down that shift key to maintain proportion. I'll scrub the timeline to see what that looks like. It comes in and kind of looks like it's starting to go further away. I want to make it look like it's coming back closer to us next. I'll move my time indicator over here and scale up the numbers. It's your preference as to whether you like scaling with the numbers in the layers panel or directly within the composition area. I'll move the time indicator again to create a keyframe way over here and then really crank up the scale to make it look like it's coming closer to us. Let's see what that looks like. I can see the green render line is too broken to play yet, so I'll scrub my time indicator to preview. It looks mostly rendered now. I'll hit play so we can see it at the actual frame rate. Let's add one more type of animation, rotation. Remember, we always have to create that point A. Think about your starting point, and it doesn't have to be at zero. I'll start over here in my timeline. Let's activate rotation by clicking on the stopwatch icon. Here's my keyframe. I'll set a second keyframe over here. For rotation, I prefer changing the numbers. I move them to the right, and the spaceship moves right. I move the numbers to the left, and the spaceship moves left. Let's scrub the time indicator and try to imagine what feels natural. I can turn it a little bit here and straighten it back out, or I could just add a couple. Let's play our composition. It certainly looks a lot smoother. Ideally, we'd finesse this a bit more to feel more natural, but I'll stop here for the sake of time. I explain how to save and encode our animations to MP4 files in a separate video. Have some fun creating your own animation.